All right, I just got these two in the mail here. Um, I'm not going to be doing too much exciting here in this video. I'm not even going to be taking these apart. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to show off a little before and after. Uh, just, I don't know, someone, I would mentioned that I just picked these up and I'd be working on them in uh, the Game Boy subreddit, or excuse me, the Game Boy Discord, and someone had expressed interest in before and after, so I'm just going to record this, walk through that. So I bought this, it, it worked out to about $25 uh, before shipping. And for those who are familiar, this is the Famicom GBA SP. This is a special edition that was only released in Japan. It's got this pearl white casing with the red buttons and the red and gold LCD frame, red and gold Nintendo emblem, and then red bottom. Uh, it's pretty cool. I got this so cheap because it said, the, the listing said that it doesn't work. Well, go figure, I haven't even taken this apart. Uh, I got it, opened it up, plugged it into charge, and, you know, it's got some uh, power switch issues, but it does work, I, I, I swear. Uh, anyway, all this thing really needs is uh, a good cleanup and then to clean out the power switch. Um, if you can see here, let me turn off that light, uh, the, it, it's kind of gross. There's a lot of stuff in the cracks and crevices, um, especially on the outside here, in there, in there, and you know, it's got some damage from being dropped. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot about that, especially since these things are painted, but you know, I don't know, it, it, it'll be fun to contrast. Uh, I, did, I did test it out, all of the buttons work. Uh, when I first pressed B, of course it's working fine now. Uh, it was like really stuck down, so it sounded like something broke, you know, there was a big old crack. Uh, select was the same way, but of course that's fine now. And, you know, all the, all the buttons do work. Let's see if I can get it to turn on one more time. There we go. See? Ta-da! Shoulder buttons. I'm genuinely surprised the shoulder buttons work as well as they do. Uh, but, you know, every, everything works on this thing, Even it even has sound. Anyway, not going to get into that too much, and yeah, it does not work. All it needed was a charge, and I guess it needs a little bit of cleanup. Um, this one, on the other hand, I actually paid a little bit more for this. This was about $30 USD, and quite frankly, it's in much worse shape than the SP. Uh, and it also has the same, I guess, power switch problem. Uh, but there's a rubber band on this one because take that off here the battery cover is broken the actual latch itself is snapped off here which is kind of a bummer because this is limited edition console I can't just pop on a new battery cover you know it's gonna be pretty obvious you know, that's limited edition color anyway uh, oh while I'm at it pull the batteries from my other game boy here um, there's a little bit of corrosion on the contacts, but that's super easy to clean up, and luckily it's only on the case half of the contacts, so if I wanted to, I don't even have to clean that up, I could just swap those out with some like aftermarket equivalents there. I'll use that one because that one will actually stay on. And then, pop in Kirby here, and yeah, boots right up. There's no sound. Haven't taken this apart yet, don't know why. Oh, go figure. I say boots right up. It doesn't actually. Let's try again here. Oh, see, it worked that time. Uh, this A button, I don't think it works. Uh, it feels like there's no actual um, like membrane left. B button feels fine. Uh, it, it does work. It's, you just have to kind of press hard. And, you know, B's working. Pause it, you have to press a little bit harder. All the directions work. Shoulder buttons work fine, but that's pretty typical of Game Boy Advance consoles. It's the SPs that really have the shoulder button issues. 
Um, but anyway, the start select really discolored there. I gotta work on that. Uh, there's, if we can see here, there's a lot of dirt and crud in there. Let's turn that light off. You can see a little bit better the. Those should be gray. They aren't. Uh, but there's just you know a lot of general wear and tear on this machine. There's some. Uh, tape adhesive there because I'm guessing the person who used to own this had it taped up to hold it. You can see there's a ton of paint missing up here as well. Paint missing. Unfortunately the serial number sticker is gone. I might just pull one from another console but it still has the Pokemon Center sticker which I mean of all things you know they're usually missing just because that's how luck works they're usually missing the the rare sticker. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty beat up, but I think it'll clean up nicely. Just get some new membranes on all of the buttons here, and then just plenty of soap and water. And as far as the battery switch, or excuse me, battery compartment goes, I'm probably going to end up embedding some magnets in epoxy for these. Uh, I did the same thing with my Latios reproduction Game Boy, uh, and I did it with my glow-in-the-dark one but basically what it is I'm just gonna drill four holes here and epoxy magnets in there and then in the battery cover itself there's some holes that match up with magnets epoxied in there and it works a lot better this the latch in this shell the latch on the cover is fine it's actually broken up here uh, but I find that the magnets tend to work pretty well if your latch doesn't and yeah I, I don't know I like the actual matching color better than something like this uh, so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart fix the power switches and then go ahead and give them a bath clean them up see if I can get it going any better this one another thing I forgot to mention the hinge is kinda like creaky I don't know if you can hear that over my AC system here I don't know, maybe it needs new hinges too. I don't know. But I'll play with it and I'll uh, I'll make another video of the end results, which I guess for you guys will be coming up right now. And today is tomorrow just like that, and I've got two Game Boys that I just finished up putting back together. Uh, well, actually, I, I put this one back together last night, and I just took it off the charger, however. Uh, it's fully charged and you know I think it cleaned up pretty darn well only issue that I'm noticing now is this pad here that covers one of the screws isn't stuck all the way down it's kind of sticking up and it's not sitting flat uh, but I'll, I'll peel that up and replace the adhesive under it and see if I can get that fixed but first and foremost let me pop in my test cartridge here this is just a, uh, a generic Chinese reproduction and I flashed my own ROM to it and this ROM is what's called the AGS Aging Cart ROM. I don't know. It's on TCRF.net, the cutting room floor. Uh, if you hold L and R while booting it, you get to this menu here that you can't see because of uh, lighting here. There we go. If we go down to Option Program, we get the key input test. We can see all my buttons are working. Uh, I've already gone through the other menu, checked out the um, the flicker test here. Now this is this, or rather the LCD unit checker. The flicker adjuster and LCD unit checker do the same thing, except that the flicker adjuster is limited to like the first four images of the LCD unit checker, and you could just cycle through them, so it doesn't really matter that much. But anyway, you pull this up. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, if you can see it at all. But basically, the screen is displaying like a, a, a gradient, I guess. Let's try the front light off and that light on. Now, it's always impossible to get these darn screens on camera properly. Anyway, uh, all, it's black all the way at the top, gray down at the bottom, and every other pixel is contrasting like complete opposite color there. And if your screen's flickering a little bit, 
we need to adjust the potentiometer on the back. It's kind of a pain in the ass to do on Game Boy Advance SPs because it's literally under the battery. You have to remove the battery to adjust it. Uh, but what you can do is you can use like little uh, test hooks or alligator clips like this to hook up a battery and you know adjust it and, and flip the unit back over to check and see how it's going. Uh, this one still needs a little bit of adjustment, but you can cycle through the programs there and see different test patterns. It is super handy for getting your LCDs dialed in. Uh, anyway, I think this thing cleaned up pretty darn nice. You can see there's no longer that crud underneath the, uh, or in that crevice there. Uh, it's all cleaned up around the button. The buttons don't feel sticky. They don't make super loud noises when you press them. Everything's one consistent color there. It still has the original label. Now the cover itself is a little bit scratched up. And there's not a whole lot I can do about that. That's just uh, the nature of the game here. There we go. These units are painted and so what you're seeing, these scratches are where the paint has come off basically. The only way to fix that is to sand it down and repaint it. I will never be able to color match this so I'd have to repaint the whole thing and I'm not really interested in doing that. This one is using an original Game Boy Advance SP battery but not the battery that it came with. The battery that it came with is uh, nice and bloated here and I'm going to be recycling this when I get around to it. Um, you can tell it's nice and bloated by how well it spins. Anyway, put that off to the side, move on to this thing here. So I got this thing uh, pretty hooked up as well. Um, I ended up having to replace both of the button membranes on, well, all three of them actually, the A, B, D-pad, and start and select here. The A, B, you could see that one's all torn up. Remember when I was saying it feels like there's no membrane left? Well, yeah, that's because that was all torn up. Uh, the D-pad wasn't quite torn up yet. Uh, on the right direction, you can see it's just starting to, starting to lose it a little bit, so I replaced that as well. And then the start and select, start and select was fine, if a little bit stiff. Uh, the only real issue I had with it was that they were kind of yellowed. They weren't exactly the right color. And I went through my bag of parts, and uh, this is what that looks like. It's full of just Game Boy Advance buttons and membranes. And believe it or not, I did not have any normal colored ones. I have like this this dark grayish brown, another dark grayish brown. Uh, if you look up here, I have a red and a blue. Uh, down here at the bottom, there's another red. And in here there should be, oh, there's one of them, there's one, another black, so on and so forth. Anyway, point being, the only membranes that I had in the proper color were all chewed up and in, quite frankly, even worse condition, or they just weren't the right color, so I stuck these black ones in there for now. Uh, now let's move on to the back here. I peeled off all that gross old tape, you know, you, in fact, I just looked at it funny and it fell off on its own. Uh, this sticker did start coming up, but I was able to stick it back down uh, with a little bit of glue stick. And I found another label, actually, from another Game Boy uh, that was in my parts bin here. The label itself is really worn down, and quite frankly, I really like that because it matches the look of the rest of the console. You know, I think this thing would look silly with a brand new label on it, you know, looking at the paint worn down here, there, everywhere and I think it turned out really well. One of the nice things I guess about this console in particular is it doesn't have a special label like this serial number label is just standard Game Boy Advance affair. Uh, if we compare it to a regular Game Boy, well this one's modded but this is still a stock label you can see they're the exact same thing there. Um, and then if we compare it with, oh no my camera's falling. Okay there we go. Uh, if we compare it with another Game Boy Advance Celebi edition, we can see the labels are the same. The only special one is the Pokemon Center one up top. So I, I think this just turned out really neat with the, the worn out, junky label there. 
and uh, oh and the battery compartment yeah the clips still missing and I ended up actually putting some dents right there and there and you'll see why as soon as I flip this over but what I did was I drilled four holes two on each side and then on the battery cover itself I press fit in some magnets here and then on the back there are these four magnets here as well so eight magnets total four on the cover four on the back these ones are epoxied in uh, I've never actually press fit them into the battery cover I always epoxied them into both sides but I figured I'd try this out just once and see what happens the first time I actually use the proper drill bit and not just using whatever was in my Dremel and you know, it, it seems to be working so far but you know I've only been playing with this thing for like two hours so far <laughs> Uh, I replaced the little spring pad here. This is the original one. I could put this one back in. Quite frankly, it's really not that bad condition. There's just a little bit of corrosion on it, and I just haven't had the chance to clean it up yet. But it should clean up pretty easily and pretty nicely. Just haven't had the chance to do it yet, so I put in another one that I already had. And uh, But anyway, back to the magnet mod I'm, I'm really happy with this implementation in particular because it just you know works it's not it's not coming off I mean if you really you know slap it around some it'll come off but I think that's true of just about any Game Boy Advance really especially with the weight of the batteries behind them uh, and it, it does well now it's not oh there it is rattles a little but I think that's more just this thing being worn out uh, but anyway this mod in particular I kind of like because if I ever when I lose that battery cover I could just take another one pop it on and it'll still fit fine the magnets don't get in the way or protrude or anything uh, and this cover in fact does still work on an original Game Boy of course unless you have the magnets though it's not gonna fit but the point being there's no actual like protrusion or anything from the magnets here. Um, oh, and one more thing, well, two more things actually. I ended up replacing the speaker uh, when I tested it out earlier. The sound wasn't working. Turns out I didn't need to replace the speaker. It was the volume wheel itself that needed a little bit of attention. Um, the speaker itself was fine, but I didn't put the original back in because it was just more effort than it's worth and. Since I used an OEM Game Boy Advance speaker, I don't think there's really any difference anyway. Uh, but once I cleaned up the volume wheel, it seemed to start working fine. And I originally wasn't going to replace the screen. This here is the original screen out of the console. Uh, this has a, another OEM Game Boy Advance screen in it. Uh, but I replaced this because as I was reassembling it, I noticed this corrosion, I guess it is, on like the last three pins on the screen. The screen itself seemed to work fine, but I didn't like the look of this corrosion, so I, since I literally had a screen sitting there, I just swapped it. And uh, then I popped in my fancy test cartridge here and got it dialed in. This Game Boy Advance actually is dialed in, unlike the uh, SP there. You hold the start select down to option key input we can see all the buttons work or maybe you can't because of the glare but you know and of course you can hear the sound working and we'll do the test and I don't know if you can make this out on camera at all especially since the screen doesn't have any light in it whatsoever or let me try Oh, no, it's not over here. Never mind, I won't try that. Uh, but you can see, well, I can see that there's no flicker at all on the screen. All the test patterns look fantastic. You know, everything worked out, which it's kind of weird that I spent so much time on that. Since the end goal for this thing, I'm probably going to put some black buttons or something in it, and I'm going to backlight it. I mean, I, I feel kind of bad because it's a limited edition console, but I've already had to make some mods just to repair it, and quite frankly, this thing's not worth that much as it is anyway. Even a pristine condition one of these is only like 100 bucks or something. Uh, this one I bought for 30 I could probably flip it for like 40 or 50 now. Maybe that's a little high. 
I don't know. Uh, but either way, I want to backlight it because I want to actually play it. Um, one more thing I want to do, I want to look into replacing this lens here. It's still in all right condition, but it's super scratched up. Uh, my other Game Boy Advance is actually in quite a bit better condition. This one I'm not going to mod at all. This one's completely stock. Uh, but I've been working with Arturo, or better known as Bluish Squirrel, to try and get one made in glass, and this is what we have so far. Uh, the sprites themselves are a little bit too small. The color of the background is still not the right color, but I think that's more my fault, because I didn't actually specify that I wanted dark gray and not black. And um, But, you know, we're, we're getting there. It's a work in progress. I'm still really happy with how this turned out. Um, but, yeah, I guess... We'll be seeing some more of this thing when Ben Ven's NDSL backlight kit comes out. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.